so we are doing the slab okay we have to today we have to do the the concept of a real and apparent depth apparent depth uh, due to near normal incidence okay so our syllabus is uh, all about uh, near normal incidence so let's say we have a, a medium and uh, let's create some So we'll believe that uh, everyone is looking from this line. And now there are two mediums. So one is the medium of observation, that's called mu medium. So mu medium is the medium in which the observer is present. And then there is another medium in which the object is present. So let me call it a mu only itself. So the mu may, mu m we can write as medium of uh, <coughs> a refractive index of. Uh, medium of observation, like from where you observe things. And uh, mu is the refractive index of medium in which object is kept. Okay. Now, what do we need to remember to solve any question like this? So we must remember that light always goes from, or you can say a direction of propagation of light direction of propagation of light is always taken from where to where, object to observer or observer to object. Object to observer. Oh, absolutely. So it is always on the object to observer. Okay. So direction of provision of light is also an object observer. So the first light ray I will take uh, directly along the normal. But uh, with the help of single light, we cannot understand anything. And also this light will not suffer any refraction. So we need to take one more light, which is at slight angle. <laughs> And now, for the sake of illustration, I'll draw it slightly. Okay. Now, any oblique, obliquely uh, incident ray, this ray will suffer refraction. And now I have no idea whether the observation medium is denser or rarer. You can choose anyone. Let me, for the time being, assume that the medium of observation is rarer so that I can draw the diagram easily. So, this is the incident ray. This is the incident ray. This is the angle of incidence. And if I assume the second medium to be a rarer medium, it will deflect away from like this. Correct. 
So now this is angle of refraction. Now how? What do we see? Do we see object? Do we see light? What do we see, guys? Tell me. What uh, light. Light. We see light. So the whole idea is simple. The light ray will enter the human eye. I'm just exaggerating this size. So for the observer, which light ray will create the image or sense of image? This light ray and the reflected one, right? So when the observer will try to retrace the path. So when you retrace the path for the the object position is here, but the place where I will or you, the observer will see the object will be here, right? You can see. How oh, you can retrace the path? And you can see this is the point of intersection. So this is called the apparent position of object, or you can simply we can we can call it image. So image is nothing but the apparent position of object. Okay. Understood. Yes. So the image is what the moment light gets refracted, we we cannot see the actual the reality. So once the light is refracted, the direction has altered. So whatever you will end up seeing is the apparent position. Or you can call it image, or you can call it uh, the apparent position of object. It's the same thing. So you will end up seeing the image actually. I mean, image is a concept. I mean, the moment the light ray is getting refracted, then the refracted or the reflected light ray gives you a perception of object, which you term as image, right? So. The question is how to find this uh, relation. That what is the the location of a uh, image? So first of all, we have something called interface. You can see there is an interface, and uh, this interface is the reference line. We always take the interface as the reference, and this we call the apparent position of object. It doesn't look nice. This is called the apparent position of the I mean, uh, apparent position of the object, or the image location from the interface. And uh, <clears throat> this we can call as the real position of the object with us to the interface, and that's why with the name is. Apparent depth and the real depth. So depth is basically because in normally it is a wrong term. The depth is nothing. It's not going down always. We can go horizontally also. But this is how we perceive the things. So if you look at in the water and something, what you see is the apparent position of the object inside the water. You don't see the actual. So if you have, if you look at the swimming swimming pool from outside, it looks like it's not so deep. But the moment you get inside, it's very deep. Okay. So the floor of the pool will look quite uh, elevated in a way. It looks like it's a, the depth is very less because what you see is the apparent depth of the the floor or the the uh, base of the swimming pool. Okay, understood. So now the obvious question is: uh, How to get this d apparent and uh, d real relationship? Is there any way to get the relationship? Answer is yes. You can always get the relationship very easily. So, what do we need to do to get the answer? So, what are we supposed to find? The relationship between the d real and d apparent. So, the light has suffered how many refraction? Sir, in one. the due process from object to observer, I mean uh, observer. Sir, one. So how many instances we need to write? 
One. One. So let's write down. So the moment you write this sentence, go apply. So applying distance law at the interface, what we can write? Tell me guys, applying distance law at the interface, what we can write? So one. So, so we have to write the normal one, you know, sine i by sine r. Is yeah, exactly. Good? What else you can write? So you can write uh, mu into sine i equals to mu medium into sine r. Correct? Yes. Sir. Now, because it's a near normal incidence, so these angles are very small. I is very small, r is very small. Correct? So these yes. diagrams are not for the exact interpretation. These are very, I mean, uh, uh, wrong diagram. Uh, we have to draw for the near normal incidence. So we can take it near normal and we can write uh, sine i as uh, i and uh, sine r as r. And for a small angle, we can convert sine into tan, right? So now what you can see that this r will become this r and this i will become this i. And you can see a triangle OAB. And that will give you the whole answer. So now you can see that how we can convert the distance going to answer that we are looking for. So what is tan i? X Can by d real. X by d real, correct. And x or uh, r d by oh, sorry, x by d apparent. So we are done. So we got the answer. So what you can see that d apparent upon mu medium. I'm just inverting it to d real. Upon me. So this is the easy to remember. The apparent is with respect to what? With the, the apparent is with respect to the medium, and the real is with respect to what? Its own medium. So the ratio remains same. Okay. So that's how the the answer is. So d apparent upon mu of observation is d real upon mu of object. So just to remember. The d apparent upon medium of observation is same as d real upon medium of uh, object. So observer gives you the apparent value. It is the observer which perceives the apparent value. And the reality cannot change. The reality is always the same. But as the observer will change the medium, things will appear different. And therefore, the D apparent is the D real into mu medium upon mu. And this we can rewrite as the D apparent is the D real upon mu relative. And mu relative is always taken with respect to observer, so it is mu upon mu medium. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. So, so the near normal incidence is giving these answer. Now again, if I say if it is not near normal, can we get the answer same? Can we cannot sign into tan i? The answer is no. No. So in that case, we have to. I mean, in that case, the the a value will depend on x actually. Okay. So things will change. In that case, things will change. Is this clear? Yes. 
Now, looking at the formula, we can also see something that object has actually shifted from bottom to till this point, right? So this is called the normal shift that we discussed in the last lecture. So how to find the normal shift? It's very easy. So basic addition subtraction will do the job. So for normal shift, So can we write the normal shift is nothing but uh, the D real minus D apparent okay can we say so what is the D real so the D real is D let's call it D or uh, the Okay, D real, let's call D real, that's easy. And the D happened, we got the D by mu relative. So the normal shift also depends on who is watching it. Okay. Is this clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the next question is, if we have a slab, of certain thickness, and again, our syllabus is all about the, the near normal incidence. So we, let's say we have an object here. So let's say a person is trying to look at this object from the other side. So how the lighter will go, one lighter will go like this. But a single ray cannot create the image. Okay. So at least we need one more lighter. Let's take one more lighter. Then so let's say the other lighter is going this way. Now, for the sake of drawing, I'm drawing uh, not near normal, just a bigger one. Eh? You know why I'm doing this. So, as a result of this slab, what will happen? The lighter will bend towards the normal because we are assuming this is denser than the air, correct? So the light ray after refraction will bend like this. Is this correct? And we have seen the something called the, something called what? The lateral shift, right? Yes, sir. So, Now, coming to the so this lighter will emerge like this, if you remember. So now this light ray and this light ray will give you the perception. And if you get, if you want to get the perception, what will you do? You will extend the light ray backward, right? So once you extend it backward, the object will appear here, O dash. Do you realize this? Maybe. So for any observer, if you observe this light ray and this light ray, imagine this is the eye. It's too big eye. Eh?
Okay, don't get scared. It's very dangerous. Uh, for this eye, <coughs> the light ray will enter and the, where the image position will look like. So anyone looking from the other side will always <coughs> see the apparent position and the displacement is called the normal shift. And what is the logic? The logic is the normal shift has nothing to do with the object position. For near normal incidence, the normal shift is always thickness into one minus one by mu relative. Why I'm writing mu relative? Because the shift is with respect to the observer and it depends on in which medium the observer is present. Okay. For air, <coughs> if the if the observer is in air, the delta n will be how much? The mu of the slab only. And this formula is something that we use quite often. Also, what we need to understand that the shift always occurs in the direction of the light. Okay, you can see the light is going towards right. So when the light is going right, the shift will happen in the right direction. And if the light is going left, then shift will occur in the left, left direction. So now there is one condition like the, <clears throat> what if the mu relative is less than one? Now, when this is true, when this is false. Now, there is a situation in which the the mu relative because the medium is denser and the object and the slab is like a, a rarer than the medium itself. Can we create something like that? You can do it again. So what if the observer is in denser medium and the object is in the rarer medium? I mean, sorry, I mean, if the slab is rarer compared to the observer's medium. I mean, let me draw it and you will understand. So let's say we have a glass. Huh? So this is called air slab. So I have just made a cavity in the shape of a slab. Okay. So yes. I have made a cavity in the shape of the slab, as you can see. All right. And if this is the case, then <clears throat> the whole idea will flipped actually now whatever you are thinking will become opposite but mathematically it is simple so let's say this is the object and the light is going one is going this way so that's i'm ignoring because this will not give me anything and the other light component is going this way now after a reflection The light ray will go away from the normal or towards the normal. Tell me this. Sir, away from the normal. Correct? Yeah. It will go away from the normal. And after that, the light ray will go towards parallel to the original one. Yeah, yeah. Let me do this line first. Extend this line.
and this light ray will move parallel to this one. Yes, sir. So if you extend this light ray backward, as we are have been doing, the object is shifting in the reverse direction. Yeah. Can you see that? So what does it mean? So the object can shift left or right depending on. See, generally when we say slab, we it's like inherently believe that the slab is denser medium and the observer is in air or some medium which is a rarer medium. But the reverse could also happen. But do we need to worry about this? The answer is no. I mean, our formula is what? Our mathematical formula is uh, thickness of the slab. 1 minus 1 by mu relative. Now, of course, this is the mu and this is mu. I mean, luckily, this is air actually, so it's 1. I, I can have anything. So, what I, I was saying that if the formula we can write as 1 upon mu by mu m, which is mu m by mu m. Now, what if the so if mu m exceeds the mu itself? the delta n will be negative. Correct? That's logical. Yeah. If the surrounding itself is denser than the slab itself, the reverse phenomena will take place. So our negative is saying that as per the older expectation, it will move along the incident ray. It will move opposite to the incident ray. That's the interpretation of negative sign. So when you get a negative sign, you have to shift the object backward this way. Is this clear? What we are doing? Yes, in sir. optics, in optics, based on the perception, let's say every time when you have derivation, it is inherently believed that the lens slab and everything else is denser. So we have one particular perception because of that particular relation. But in JEE advance or in any tough question, you have to fight with your intuition because they will reverse the scenario. So they may create a prism with air. So I can take a big glass slab and I will cut a prism inside and I will remove that part. So it will act as a uh, air prism. Now everything will reverse because the prism is now rarer than the, and I may fill the prism with some liquid, maybe some kerosene. So I have a kerosene prism and the kerosene prism will be definitely uh, less denser than the glass. So things will change. So in such scenario, you should understand how to interpret the answer. So you always keep one perception, but a negative sign will make the process reverse. So forward becomes backward, up becomes down and so on. So the normal shift is the property of slab. And generally, in general, the shift occurs in the direction of incident ray assuming the slab is denser than the surrounding for reverse scenario the shift will be opposite to the direction of incident ray and if you want you can put into a note so tell me guys what should i write here in note so that it depends on the surrounding yeah it should depend on the surrounding of course so we can say generally the normal shift occurs in the direction of, so generally the normal shift occurs in the direction of incident ray, assuming the Ri of slab is greater than Ri of surrounding 
medium is vice versa. So right now you have to just stick to this idea. Don't worry much. So the normal shift is something which is very, very important. And every slab is capable of doing it independently. And the good thing is that the shift always have the fixed value. And the shift always remains independent of the position of the slab. So the second idea that we should be uh, careful about is normal shift remains independent of position of slab. Any other idea that we need to be careful about? I think uh, normal shift formula is applicable for near normal incidence okay so the normal shift occurs in the direction of incident ray assuming the ri of slab is greater than ri of surrounding else vice versa if this is condition is met so if the light ray will come on the other side, it will again shift. So while, I mean, okay, I'll give you another example. So imagine if we have uh, some sort of uh, concave mirror on this side and eventually the light will travel and will hit this mirror and after hitting the mirror let's say the light ray is tracing back it is going back somehow so i am not showing the incident part i'm just showing the reflected part can you draw the remaining diagram? How the light ray will arrive at the axis? Assume one other ray I'm taking as this way, which will go just like this. So draw the remaining ray diagram just to realize that how things will happen. Everyone draw it. In the ray optics, you have to draw the rays. That's it. Yeah, sir, I do. So, then, so it will bend towards the normal. Let me do one normal first. So the ray will bend. Yeah. But eventually it will go parallel to itself. Yeah, parallel to the original. So now the expected location of the ray was this. So this is called the image formed by the mirror. And this is the final image. Now mirror is not, a, you see for mirror, the image is forming here only. Because mirror is not aware of the fact that slab is in between and it will shift my answer. So when we are solving the problem of mirror and slab problem, once we have the answer for the image position of the mirror, we have to shift from our side to get the answer, actual answer. Do you realize this? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Hello, hello. So the question is generally why I'm teaching this because uh, we need to understand how to solve question of mirror and slab. So there's something called mirror and slab problem. Mirror and slab problem. So it is solved in two stages. First, 
shift object because you have to shift the object also the slab will shift it normally and then the the mirror will perceive the apparent position of object as the object and the apparent position of object will be the object distance for the mirror right and the step 2 is what solve uh, solve for image position using mirror formula and uh, to find the final position of image again shift the image of mirror so first you need to shift the object to find the uh, object position due to the, i mean for the given mirror then use the mirror formula then solve the question and then again shift to get the other answer this is this is the three step process shift apply so it's uh, the process we can mark it as uh, something like this shift mirror formula So I can say back shift. If I say this is forward shift, then this is the back shift, and then you are getting the answer. So let's see some question to understand. Uh, but before that, we will solve some basic questions from the real and absolute depths. And before we solve something, let me show you something interesting. So imagine there is a pond or lake or river and we have some fish here So this is the fish, huh? And there is a bird called kingfisher. Have you heard this name? Yes, sir. So generally, this is air, and this is the uh, um, let's say dense medium. I'm just making it simple. Can you draw the ray diagram? Because the fish is the assuming fish is the observer. And fish is looking at the kingfisher. Now, how to draw the kingfisher? I cannot draw, but uh, I'll draw only uh, a small portion. A dangerous kingfisher. I don't know. It is uh, maybe I can draw to mark it like a uh, uh, can I see kingfisher? How it looks like? Difficult. Huh? We all know Kingfisher. Okay, something like this. Uh, okay, a big. Uh, this is even bigger. Okay, it's not very large. Okay, as my drawing skills are really good. Oh, this is something like creature of beyond imagination. Anyway, you can imagine the rest part is up to the 
imagination. So now this is the kingfisher. And this is the fish. And now what I'm saying, the fish is the observer. Kingfisher is in air. Okay. So the question is, what is the, okay, now let's say the, the height of the kingfisher from the interface is H. And okay, so first of all, you just do the radar. Draw the ray diagram to find the apparent height of the kingfisher with respect to fish. Now, fish is the observer. So, question is find the apparent height of the kingfisher with respect to fish. Draw appropriate ray diagram okay so first you draw the ray diagram because you, you, you can feel it better see how the reflection uh, refraction is affecting the location yeah sir it has uh, the board will appear below the position so how you have taken the light ray so light first ray. from the Bird to the fish without any. Okay, fine. So, so this will just go like this. Huh? So this is the light, no? The bird and fish is missing. And the other, I will take as at some angle, like this. Yeah, sir. So this light, this light ray will turn towards the normal or away from normal. Towards. So if you uh, trace back this light ray and this light ray, where you will get? Yeah, sir, it will be above the board. Sorry. Okay. In my case, I cannot draw it further, but you can understand. Okay. Yeah. So it will be much above the actual position. So there is a dilemma. The fish always believe that the, the kingfisher is quite far away. And the dilemma is you see, the kingfisher always believe that the fish is quite closer. And these two, the dilemma is such that the fish will try to go towards the surface to have some oxygen. Okay. And the, the kingfisher will think that, okay, while going, let's have some breakfast. And so that when the kingfisher dives in, uh, because of the experience, the kingfisher always dives inside the water and catches the fish because the apparent depth is, of course, less than the actual. And so kingfisher knows inherently that it has to dive actually. So maybe the fish is not smarter. The kingfisher is smarter. And uh, anyway, fish doesn't care that they will come and kill because that idea is not with the, the fish. Maybe the fish is having less brain. I don't know how much brain is having. But so what is the answer, by the way? What is the apparent height of the kingfisher? The H apparent is how much? So for the fish, what is the apparent height? Tell me, guys. So, so we can use the same formula only. Yeah, of course. Oh, so the actual H by mu. Are you sure? 
H1 mu is less than H2. You are saying it is less than H. Eh? I am saying it should be more than H. Okay, do one thing. I mean, of course, there is a formula we can solve this question. Can you derive it the way we did for the previous question? The I R triangle. Then you can assume X. Then write the formula and then get the answer. Can you do it now? Yes, sir. So draw a separate diagram in which you draw it properly. Extend the line. Make sure that you have enough space to intersect. Use the triangle and then get the answer. So do it from scratch without using the formula. Arshit is not there, eh? Yeah, so he, but he had joined in this town and now he's in.
for the answer? No, sir. Why? For last time it was easy because you had made the whole geometrical figure. Yeah, so that's the best part, right? In geometrical optics, until anyone is not mastering the drawing part, it is never going to be easy for you. Knowing the formula is one thing, but if you want to enjoy the jump optics, you should draw the lines, the ray diagrams, and think about it why, how it is drawn, how it is derived the formula. So try this out, put some effort.
Hello, guys. Not able to do. Is it so difficult? So the diagram. I'm trying, but I'm getting nowhere. I got the diagram, but yeah. So th this is the angle of incidence, right? This is the angle of reflex. If this is I, so this is I. If this is R, so this will be R, which I haven't drawn completely. But one thing I know that must be the H apparent, right? Yeah. And this is your X. You can write as a very simple answer. One, because you're entering from the air, light is coming from N. So one sine I equals to mu sine R. So 10 I equals to mu 10 I for near normal incidence as we have discussed. And the 10 I will be X upon H and uh, 10 I will be H apparent sorry, X upon H apparent. So the H apparent turns out to be mu H, simple. That's logical not because it is bigger than H, so it must be the product actually. So even if in case if, if even if in case you get uh, forget the answer, remember the logic. If anything is being look, uh, looked from the denser medium, so from denser it appear farther, from rarer it appear nearer. So denser, farther, rarer, nearer. So NRDF, uh, NDRF, oh. Yes. National disasters, uh, NDRF is famous, no? Uh, so National Disaster Rescue Force, I think. No, no, National Disaster Rescue Force, I think. Maybe Response Force, I think. Uh, response Force, National Disaster Response Force, correct. Okay, so in near error, and denser further, maybe like this, but it's really bad. Common sense is better. Now, if you remember the formula which we derived using the formula, so we derived that uh, the H apparent upon mu of observer, H real upon mu of object. So apparent is from uh, denser medium, from uh, water. So H apparent. And the mu of observer is mu only. H real is H and mu of object is one. So this is the simplest way to remember. Is this clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so it this is easy, like no matter how it is given, you can always do this. And uh, what are the other way of thinking is this was the Okay, the fish example. This is the observer, let's say. Not this. Observer is in the density medium, that's it. So this is the observer. The new observer is new. And the objective was here, right? Something here. So we know that if you look from here, the air will act as a slab, right? You can think this as slab. This is the alternative way of thinking. 
So imagine a air slab of thickness h. So what is the formula for the normal shift? If you remember, the normal shift is how much? Thickness into one minus one by mu relative. If you remember, yes. And mu relative is mu of the object upon mu of the observer. Observer. So the delta n turns out to be one minus mu. And uh, because this is the shift, so there are two ways. And I'm assuming this is this entire term is positive, although I know it's negative. But let's say this is positive. The apparent height will be how much? The actual height minus shift. This is how we do, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. H minus H into one minus mu. How much is the answer? H mu. Let's say I'm smart. Okay. So I know this is negative, so I'll make it first. So how? Minus mu minus one into H. So the minus is saying that the, the shift will be backward of this value, correct? So the H append will be how much? I what I like? I like H plus, correct? Yes. Same answer. So it is like if I know that the shift has occurred in the backward direction, I will add the value because the minus is only saying that the shift is in the reverse direction as you expected. And if I treat that term as positive without manipulating anything, then the shift will be along the light because light is coming down. So I have taken the shift downward. So the H apparent is H minus the shift, which is again giving me mu H. So there are multiple ways, ways of thinking the same problem. The normal shift is one way of thinking. How shift helps in getting the answer. Is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. Please. So if we have multiple slabs, then shift will be multiple times. And the each slab will have their own uh, shift value, correct? So imagine we have one slab. Let's bring in two slabs. Two slabs for them. Uh, okay, let me create a, a slab for observer as well, right? Always a good idea. Just to make it nicer. So this is the mu of observer. So this is mu one, mu two, mu three, and let's say thickness wise, this is t one, t two, and this is my object. So now the light ray has to move from the object towards the observer. Here is the observer. Just to give you other perspective that even if I have a, <coughs> a slab here, so T4 will matter, yes or no? Will T4 matter? For the object and the observer? 
So no. No, no. Because light ray will never cross the the medium number four while going towards the observer. So what really matter is that which slab comes in in the path of the light ray when the light ray is going from the object towards the observer. So anything which is not part of it is of no use. You can just discard. Now there are two ways to solve this question. So the first way is like uh, the D apparent will be the total D minus the total shift. So once you apply the shift formula, you can get the answer. And other formula is, of course, we can <laughs> directly write the formula. The D apparent upon that will prove also that the mu of the observer is uh, thickness is given. T1 by mu1 plus T2 by mu2. So well, this is a simple way of getting the answer. Let's try to get it from here. So the D apparent connector is D real, which is T1 plus T2 plus T3 minus. Now, as we know that shift is independent of position of the slab. So how much is the first slab will shift? I know the answer T1 1 minus mu medium by mu 1. Correct, if you remember. And therefore, <clears throat> if you multiply what is the answer, you can say T1, this you can see directly we are getting the answer. And then this uh, we can convert into the form that I said. T1 on you. So this is the direct formula, which you can derive using the oh, direct formula. So you can use this direct formula, or you can use the the actual location minus the shift of each value. Now, why the shift formula is easier to apply? Because sometimes the medium may be uh, rarer, so. It will take care of all the values, whether it's a positive or negative. And always remember that if no medium is given, you can take air as a slab while doing this, uh, applying this formula. For air, the mu we can take as one. Okay. So what I'll do is, I mean, not I will do, you guys will do for me. I will help you in deriving the formula. Because I think uh, still we haven't got the confidence of drawing the diagram in uh, array of x. You are trying to learn this chapter through by cramming the formula and using it for solving problem. But I really want you to solve and draw it actually. So now let's make it simple. I mean, for you, it is simple question. Uh, o is object and observer is this way. This side, okay. And let's say D1, D2 is the thickness or depth or whatever you can say. And uh, okay, you have to derive the answer of the apparent depth. So here, how the light ray will move? So one will move directly like this, nothing will happen. Okay. Yes. The other will move at some angle. So what is the relation between mu1 and mu2? No relation. So you can choose whatever you want. So what I'll do, for the sake of simplicity, I will take in the path, the mu will decrease. But that will give me a nice diagram, right? 
these are all mathematical assumptions. The moment you assume it, it is and it is giving you nice diagram and you can solve it easily. That's it. So draw along with me. The first ray will go like this, but it will suffer refraction. Yes or no? Yes. And it will move away from the normal. Yes or no? I mean, just let's assume away. Oh, yes. If new one is less. Yeah, if new one is less. And see, in mathematical derivation, eventually we'll get a mathematical relation, and so it will not matter. So it really doesn't matter. And it will bend once more. So this is uh, I one, R one, R one, R. Uh, that's fine. And you know what will be done next? You extend the line. To meet the vertical line, so you have to write how many times the expression? Or two times. So this is the first image, and see the the second or the final image, and you are supposed to find this value that that's the dr. So, of course, you will not get the answer at once. You have to do a bit of hard work. Can you solve this now by drawing the remaining diagram? Or do I need to draw everything? Eh? Okay, let, let me do this. It's still derive it. Okay, I've drawn the entire diagram, which you need. So, derive the final D apparent from this array diagram. Okay. You can use the approximation because it's a near normal incidence. Ignore the diagram which you, we have drawn here. Like I have drawn of course. So try this out. At least you will realize what we are doing. Huh? Yes.
anyone knows who is shivansi jain is she in your batch so no, i don't know Sir, will there be X and X dash in the answer? No, of course not.
So I think we have taken enough time as we solve now. So at least two minutes or two minutes. Right is nil for two times and cannot answer. Yes, sir, I did it. Now I am looking at the figure and trying to solve it. You can take this as y and you can write. Uh, I am writing directly answer. Um, mu two into sine. So I can just write time. Mu two into i one x upon uh, d two equals to. Me one into x by y, and then me one into r one. This is r. This is r. This is r one. So r one will be x dash upon d two plus y is r into X plus y, b apart. So x plus will cancel out. So b apart turns out to be d two plus y <coughs> by mu one, and uh, the y turns out to be y by mu one is d two by mu two. So y turns out to be d two mu one by mu two. Oh, I have made some mistake. Uh, d one plus no, this is d one plus y. So d one plus y. Right? So we got the y value. So we can add d1 plus d2 mu1 by mu2 by mu1. If I divide, what I'll get d1 by mu1 plus d2 by mu. And that is a logical answer. So you can do it for two, and then you can do it for any number. So in general, the way to write. This term is d apparent upon medium of observation is summation of d i upon mu one. That's it. Easy to remember. Yes, sir. So the only mistake I made in the formula was one into x dash by d one. I wrote by mistake. So I was okay. not getting the d apparent term only. So I was confused. Oh, yeah. But still, you tried. That's a good thing. See, if you want to get rid of the the effort of uh, mugging up the formula, mm -hmm. just learn the derivation. And if ITJ will ask, throw any random question. Anyone with the habit of drawing the diagram and solving from scratch, you will get the answer. Someone only knows the formula, you will come across situation in which no direct formula will be applicable, so you will get stuck. <laughs> okay. So this was the reflection from the uh, plane surface, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the apparent should be <coughs> applied only when the The refracting surface is flat. Yes, sir.
Okay, so in general, this is easy to remember. You can apply for any, any number. So although we derive for two, but I, as you know, you can apply for three, four, five, and whatever. So I hope the concept of normal shift is clear, how to find the normal shift and how to uh, find the apparent and real. Let's do something interesting. So we have two medium. Which I'm representing by two different colors. And we have the object one here. And from this interface, the separation is, uh, let's call it uh, D1 or X1. What do you want to say? D or X? D. D. And the refractive index is in one. Question is fine. Then. Distance of O2 as seen by O1. Distance of O1 <coughs> seen by O2. So when O1 is the observer, <coughs> which distance will appear as it is? When you enter the water, you can see the inside is there, right? Clearly, without any apparent. The apparent only happens when the light suffers a refraction. So for observer O1, the D1 will appear D1 or different from D1. What do you think? For observer one, it will be D1. For observer one, D1 will appear D1 only, right? But yes. D2 will appear something different, D2 dash. Or you can say the apparent value of D2 as seen by the. So <clears throat> for the A case, the distance of O2 as seen by O1 will be. So distance of 2 as seen by 1, you can write as D1 plus D2 apparent. Because you cannot see D2 complete, right? You can see D2 apparent value. And to get the apparent value, how to find? So D2 apparent upon the medium of observation equals to D actual upon the medium. So D2 apparent is how much guys tell me? D2 mu one by mu two. Yes, sir. And then the D2 one turns out to be D1 plus d2 by mu2 into mu. <coughs> there are many ways of uh, writing this you can write this way or uh, you can take mu1 common it will look like d1 by mu1 plus d2 by mu2 okay and uh, we are doing in terms of slab and all you know the idea of slab so this we can convert into a two slab problem by thinking that uh, you can think this is one slab and this is the main slab. And who is observer? The observer happens in the medium one. So the O2 will appear at a apparent depth, which we know formula, right? 
So if O2 is the object and O1 is the observer, light ray will travel like this. Correct? No. Are getting it? What I'm saying? Yes. So D21 will be so D21 upon and the observer is having the refractive index mu1. So this must be equal to D2 by mu2 plus D1 by mu1. And if you rearrange, you will get the same answer. Correct? Yes or no? No. Yes. Yes. And similarly, D12, like uh, the distance of uh, one as seen by the two. So we can add this by mu2 equals to the direct formula. So D12 turns out to be D2 plus mu2 by mu1 into d one. The way you can think slab formula or you can think as the apparent real, it is up to you how you want to understand this. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. So yes, now the, the next question will be like, if uh, this is moving with velocity, let's say the, these are two fish in the aquarium and these two aquarium is kept side by side. And uh, the first fish is moving with velocity v1 and second with velocity v2. <laughs> and then I want to find the, <laughs> the relative velocity of one as seen by two and two as seen by one. So these are two possible questions. So the next question, which is obvious, <laughs> Find the find the relative velocity of one with respect to two and uh, two with respect to one. So can you tell me the answer? So the distance relation and the velocity relation will be similar. Replace the D by V, you will get the answer, right? Yes, sorry. We have to just differentiate, but I'm that. Yeah, and you have to be very careful when you differentiate, then you have to see whether it is increasing or decreasing or something. Okay. All right. So what is the separation in general between these two objects? So distance of two as seen by one is, so one is the observer. So we know mu1 into x1 by mu1 plus x2 by mu2, right? See, easy to, and then we differentiate. So this is the velocity of two as seen by one. And this is uh, minus V1 by mu1. Why minus? Because X is decreasing, right? They're coming towards the interface. I, I, or we always take the interface as the, <coughs> the reference, right? So the X1, X2 are measured from the interface. A interface is my reference. And as the fish will move, X will decrease. So we have to put minus sign and then uh, again, a minus sign and that's it. And so the minus sign will come outside. You can see the answer is this. And now the minus is saying that they are approaching. Okay. So <clears throat> if the relative is negative, it means the separation is decreasing or diminishing with time. So this is the velocity of approach. So we want to approach is how much? Then you can remove the minus sign. Therefore, we want to approach will be how much?
something like this yes or no yes sir then you can you can change the direction let's say you can one take uh, taking right and left and something like that and the fish can also start moving at some angle also that's also possible so you can start solving the question from sc verma and you will be able to solve the next uh, maybe 10 20 questions I need to check as well now. Okay, all right. So now you can start solving the, the question of refraction. And there's a really nice question from uh, in SC Verma. Solve it one by one sequentially and uh, practice the array of text. That's very important. In the next lecture, I will solve some more questions actually. So next lecture will be purely numerical solving. Only. So I will show you that uh, how to solve questions. And we'll see some more advanced questions. Okay, okay guys, bye and take it. Sir, sir, yeah. I have two doubts, and I mean, uh, in two questions, mm -hmm. can you solve the one question? Sir? Yeah, send me. Oh. So it is uh, related to the optics or something else? Sir, no, something else. Okay, so let me stop this lecture because this is this recording will go for the upload. So let me stop it and then you can read one okay? mm -hmm. or you can share the question i'll just uh, share the solution okay sir how huh? and one more uh key, sir in when we write the young's modulus in which we write the stress we write the ex sorry extra force right we write the extra force like in circular motion we write the mv square by r as the extra force extra force Sir, in uh, stress while writing the stress in Young's modulus. Okay, okay. Young's modulus is stress. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We so write in, the, in the circular motion question, no? Mm -hmm. Huh. We write the extra uh, like mv square by r as the extra force. No, that is not a, <laughs> that is not the extra force. If it is rotating, then that is it will have the centripetal force. So T d theta uh, equals to M A C and if it is having some charge or something, so T G D theta minus repulsion force equals to M A C. So you are writing the formula net force towards the center equals to mass into centripetal acceleration. So either you can write the net force equals to mass into centripetal acceleration, or you can write net force equals to zero, in which you take the pseudo force, which is the centrifugal force equals to M omega square R. Or MAC, okay. Oh, it is a part of circular motion. We are not writing extra, we are writing the laws of motion. And for any circular motion, how we write the laws of motion? Tell me. So, yeah, that I know, but yeah, uh, sir, okay. Then in one question, uh, there was one string and one block was hanging on to that string. Mm -hmm. So, while writing stress, I have to take the tension in that. Stress for yeah, right? Of course, of course. And yes, the whole yes. magnitude of tension or any component of tension. Is it moving or is it at rest? No, it's in equilibrium. Ah, so then only tension come now. How the extra force will come? Extra force is due to the rotation, not due to circular motion, right? So, okay, sir, understood. Yeah, what you're saying, extra force is the rotation m omega square r the rotation part. Yes, sir. Should I send you the question? Yeah. The question of 14 or 15. Sir, both are related to passage on 15th one. But... So if the density of air is, uh, yeah, in this case, what we do is the rate so was not able to write the Bernoulli's equation for the two points. Okay, okay no, no. in this case, the air water mixture will go outside, right? The air and the liquid mixture both goes outside. So what happens is generally the air pressure will drop, which will suck the water from the container, like liquid from container to the pipe. And then the incoming air will mix with it and will go outside. 
so generally the reduction in the pressure is due to the the kinetic head or you can see the the kinetic pressure which is half rho half rho square. square okay so <coughs> the half rho v square you can say rho half rho v square is equal to half rho v square but the rho is liquid and v liquid and rho i mean this uh, uh, so, so I should air, conserve yeah. the pressure at which points? No, no, we are and not conserving. No, no, there is nothing like conserve, conserving pressure here. We are writing the relationship directly uh, at the at the junction where the liquid will meet the air. Okay. So liquid will meet the liquid from the bottom container will meet the air at the junction. You can see there is junction in the pipe. Yes. So at the junction, the air will create a pressure drop okay and the pressure drop is how much half rho a square half rho a square yes and half rho air a uh, v air whole square and that a pressure drop will suck the liquid to that location which is mgh or you can say rho gh the increase in the potential of sir the h is uh, negligible yeah h is negligible so you can that so it's a proportional to value we are they are asking proportional value right what is proportional? Yes. You can ignore the H. So what is the relation of the velocity? So speed the at which the liquid is spread. So the speed at which the liquid is spread is same as the speed of air actually. Isn't it? Yes. So can you... you can just check that. Right. So whatever is the length of the neck, so V A is how much? Into some constant two G H whatever. Uh, sir, but when the water will rise up, wouldn't there be any velocity for the liquid? Yeah, that we can ignore compared to the velocity of the the air pressure so air is thrust out of this uh, uh, hole the and then water will mix with the air only, and then it will move along with the air so the velocity of the mixture will be as per the air velocity through which we are throttling out the air okay, okay. so the answer will be i think c should be the option let me check oh, yes that is not And what is the other question? So, no, this one done.